In the last video, we talked about how to name a simple alkane like pentane that just has one continuous chain of carbon atoms. I gave you a list of alkane names for one through 10 carbon atoms. And this is going to be the first thing on your list of things that you need to memorize in order to know how to name organic molecules. So on this list, we are going to put, we need to memorize the names of the parent chains or alkanes that have one to 10 carbon atoms. Anything more than 10 carbon atoms we don't see very often. So now for the next example that we have on this page right here to name this molecule, this one's going to be a little different because notice in this molecule we have this point, this carbon atom, where the molecule branches, where it divides and heads in two different directions. So let's go all the way back to the beginning because we need to add some to our definition. That branching that we observe in that molecule is called a substituent. A substituent is a single atom or a group of atoms. So we'll just say atom or atoms that are attached to the parent chain. Now make sure that you make a note that this does not include hydrogen. So hydrogen is never considered to be a substituent. It needs to be something more interesting than hydrogen. So that is that um, branch is referred to as a substituent. Let's look at that molecule again. So at this point where the molecule divides and heads into two directions, one direction is going to be part of the parent chain, like maybe it's this right here. So if this is part of the parent chain, then this would be the substituent, the part that's hanging off the parent chain. Or maybe it's the other way. Maybe this is the parent chain and this is the substituent that hangs off the parent chain. Or maybe this is the parent chain and this is our substituent. So let's go back again before we tackle naming this type of molecule. There's a couple of things that we need to work on. Um, first of all, let's start working on our steps for naming alkanes. So let's come up with a list of steps that we'll take when we're naming alkanes. First thing that we are going to do always will be to find the longest continuous chain of carbon. We are looking for the longest continuous chain of carbon atoms. Let's go back to that example and let's do that. Let's start by finding the longest continuous chain. When we're looking for the longest continuous chain, we are going to consider every single end of the molecule. This one has three terminal carbon atoms. Every single one of those is a potential starting point and a potential stopping point. And what we want to do is move from one starting point, potential starting point, to a potential ending point and count how many carbon atoms are in between those two points. If we go just straight from left to right, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. That would be a six carbon chain. And because we learn how to read from left to right and from top to bottom, our eyeballs are really naturally drawn to this shape right here. Our eyes want to always see that as being the parent chain, even though it's not always the parent chain. So that was one, two, three, four, five, six carbons. Now let's consider starting at the same point, but ending going over to this point instead. That would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So clearly that's longer, which means that this is probably the parent chain for the molecule. I mean, it is. Let's just pretend that we couldn't see that starting here and ending here was a tiny path, but this would also be something that we should look for. One, two, three, four carbons, obviously that's less than seven. So our parent chain, which I'm gonna highlight, is right here. 
That is the parent chain of the molecule. And that's the first step in naming this molecule. That parent chain had seven carbons in it. And let's look at this list over here. A seven carbon molecule is a heptane. So this molecule is going to be some derivative of heptane. It's not heptane because it has this attached to it, but its name is going to have heptane in there somewhere. So we'll just make a note of that. Now, the next thing that we need to do is figure out how to name our substituent. The names of the substituents are derived from the names of the alkanes or the base or the parent chain. They're very similar and they're based also on the number of carbon atoms that are in the substituent. The only thing that's different with them is that they have a different ending because remember the ending ane is used to refer to an alkane. So when it's a substituent, it gets a different ending. A one carbon substituent is methyl. A two carbon substituent is ethyl. Three carbon is propyl. Four carbon is butyl. And hopefully by now you can see the pattern. We're getting rid of the A-N-E because it's not an alkane. And we're replacing it with Y-L. This Y-L suffix is always going to be our suffix that indicates that this is a substituent. Pentane becomes pentyl. Six carbons is hexyl. Seven is heptyl. Eight is octyl. Nine is nonal. And 10 is decal. So what exactly are we looking at with this molecule and its substituent? How many carbon atoms are in this substituent? This is something that confuses students quite a bit. This carbon atom right here is definitely part of the substituent. Nobody questions that. But sometimes people want to include this carbon atom right here as being part of the substituent also. That's not accurate. Each carbon atom is only allowed to be either part of the parent chain or part of the substituent, but it can't be part of both. Because this carbon atom is part of the parent chain, it is not part of the substituent. Our substituent is this single atom right there. That's one carbon atom. And I'm gonna erase these arrows. One carbon atom, what is the name that we give to a one carbon substituent? One carbon in our substituent is called methyl. So what we've done now is figured out the name of that substituent. We're going to call it a methyl. And that is the second step for naming alkanes. We need to identify and name our substituents. Also on our list, add that we need to memorize the names of our substituents that have one to 10 carbon atoms. So let's go back to this molecule and let's figure out what else we need to do to name it. So the last part of this name is that we have to indicate the location of this methyl substituent. We have to specifically say that its location on the carbon chain is right here. The methyl is not located right here or right here or right here or out here. We have to specifically say that it is in that particular place. And the way that we do that is by numbering our parent chain. We number all of the carbon atoms in the parent chain. Each one gets a unique number and that will become the location of our substituent. The way that we choose to systematically number the, the carbons in the parent chain is that we number in such a way that our substituents will get the smallest possible number. So when we number, we start at one end, like we start here, and we literally just start numbering our carbon atoms, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and we think about that as a possible numbering system. 
And then we consider if we numbered in the other direction. We don't have to go from right to left. We could also go from left to right. So I'm going to do that in red. This would be carbon 1. This would be carbon 2. This would be 3. This is still 4 either way. 5, 6, 7. So either one of those is a reasonable um, set of numbers for this molecule. What we want to go with is the lowest possible number for the location of the methyl group, which is 3 when we number from right to left. So this methyl is located on carbon number three, and that becomes part of the, of the name of the molecule. So when we put it all together, we say, first of all, the location of the substituent, and then we say the name of the substituent, and we jam it all together with the name of the, of the parent chain, to make the name of the whole entire molecule. Now notice that I put a dash in between the location three and the name of the substituent, but I didn't put anything in between the name of the substituent and the name of the parent chain. This is one of the rules that we have when we're naming molecules. We always will separate numbers and letters with a dash. without any exceptions, but we don't do anything to separate letters from letters. So letters will just get jammed right up against each other, just like we did right here. So let's dissect this name like we did in the example up above. We have heptane, which tells us that this is a seven carbon alkane parent chain. We have methyl, which tells us that we have a one carbon branch on the heptane. And we have three, which is the location of the branch.